Hello guys and welcome back to our podcast. I hope you had the most incredible weekend. Yes, it is Monday. I was like, mm, it's like middle of the week. It's Monday. It's Monday for if you're you guys listening. listening. Real time. Yeah. It's been a good week. I think yeah. we've both had really productive, wholesome weeks. So I wouldn't say soft hustle at the moment. No. Nah, I would just say hustle. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But it's not forced. We're enjoying it. Yeah, that's the difference because I was posting about it and I did write soft hustle and then I was like, mm, if I think about it, it's probably not soft, but it's enjoyable. Yes. It's not like we're forcing it and it's like a negative toxic thing. It's definitely enjoyment, loving what we're doing. That's a big difference. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Should we just get straight into our raw reality for the yeah, week? Yeah, definitely. I've gone first a few times, so I think you're up. All right, well, strap in my lovely ladies because we have some catching up, catching to, up to do and some big news. So do I start with the elephant in the room? I think you start with the biggest elephant in the room. Okay, I am going to LA. She's going to America. <laughs> I'm going on a solo trip to Three. America. How long do you leave? 21 days. Yeah, 21 days. <laughs> Yeah, and I booked it with, I think, 25. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been something I've been like, like just deciding whether I want to or not. And there was initially something I was going for, but that fell through. And I was like, why not? Why not Mm. still go? And I do have on my goals this year to do a solo trip. And for the last six months, I've been feeling like the pull to go to America. Don't know why. I've been three times. LA, I was like, I don't think I'll go back until I have kids. Like, what is Mm. really there? But something is there and it's calling me to go. And so I was struggling to make the decision for like two weeks probably. Like, Oh, mate. Lily Give it a like, month. <laughs> Lily was like, when was the latest you can book the day of? And I'm like, yeah, probably. Um, and so after our last podcast, I basically went home and booked it. Yeah. And yeah, I honestly, the second I booked it, it was like a rush of excitement. And then also like, what the fuck have I done? Yeah. And so for the probably next like three days, I was like, what have I done? Like, am, is this like what I'm supposed to do? Looking for the right or wrong answer, like whether this is the right or wrong thing to do. And just like second guessing, like everything. I'm like, fuck, like financial, am I okay? You know, just a bit of everything. Mm. Anyway, so initially I was going to do LA for five days um, and then Florida for five. But I've now just decided to stay in LA to maximize my opportunity in LA. I've got some friends coming from LA and I don't actually know where Zoe's from. I, I want to say Canada, but Nairi is from Canada. So two girls are coming and meet, well, three girls are meeting me in LA and I'm staying with the two of them for five days and we just want to live it up. We want a gym. Pil- we just found the cutest Pilates studio. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. I'm so excited. We found like a photography space if we want to like get some content together. Yeah. Um, three of us with Gymshark, two of us with Muscle Republic. So we're like, let's just slap oh, it up. Oh, who else is with Muscle Republic? Um, Nairi. Oh, yeah. perfect. So she was like, let's get content. We want a gym. We want to do our routine in America, basically, or well, in LA. And I'm so freaking excited. I'm so excited for I, you. So leading on to my next little update for you, I had a kinesiologist workshop on the weekend. So basically this was run by kinesiologists who own like an academy to then teach kinesiology. And they have like your diploma, you can do courses. And then they also run like day workshops where you obviously don't get qualified as a kinesiologist, but you learn the tools and the tips on somewhat of a surface level. It's still very in-depth because it's like yep. a four-hour thing. Um, and I kind of went into that because one of the mentors that I'm currently working with, she owns it. And she was like, come along, like, you'll love it. And I really wanted to go into that and take on tools and like protocols and and practices that I can then teach my athletes and put into obviously my own practice, but then help the kids that I teach as well and how they they can implement implement that. And so I went into like with the intention of like learning the tools and practices to then teach. And then it kind of like didn't, like I learned a lot that I can teach, but that like wasn't the driving force of the workshop. It ended up being me and like your self development, navigating my self development, what I was like kind of navigating with going to LA and how I was feeling about it. And so it ended up, yeah, being me kind of figuring out what emotions are there. And it definitely came back to financial, like my financial state. Um, and the emotions that came up was like overwhelm, self to self. And then so working out what I needed to be able to move through that. And it came down to like me saying an affirmation to myself five times a day for nine days. Like it's so specific because you test your body on what it wants. Um, And basically just like rewriting the story because I think I've mentioned so many times, I'm like, Jackson's so good with finances. Like he kind of 
you know, does really well with that. And I'm just like, not really. Whereas like, I am good with finances. Like, it's not like I'm You're bad. telling yourself that story. Yeah. And you're starting to believe it because you tell yourself that. Yeah. And I think because coming from like a childhood who didn't really have much money and we were always running tight. And then I think like, you know, mum was like, no, we can't have that. We can't afford that. And so then I think I have to be tight and like, I can't do all these things. And now it's like, I'm slowly building, you know, a job and a state where I can do these things mm-hmm. and like support myself and you know we're talking about it on the in the car on the way here like I'm spending you know two grand on flights and then Jackson's just gone and spent somewhat same on a new camera and then you've just gone and bought an iMac and we're all just like choosing to spend our money in different ways depending on what we want out exactly. of it exactly and so I'm choosing to have this experience that I've wanted to have and I'm like well why not do it while I can I don't have a mortgage I don't have kids I don't have a dog you know like I can literally just get up and leave providing it works and I was like I just got to stop limiting myself yeah. with those beliefs and the stories and like the other thing that came up was like stepping into my feminine a lot more Re- like pulling back on the masculine which I am just like so good at mm. like wanting to control wanting to be perfect where it's like okay let's just pull that back sit in the feminine and go can I just be open to receiving like all that I want yes it's great to work for it and be in the masculine but can I also just sit back and let it happen for me so I'm trying to balance the both of them. Like, it's hard. Yeah, because it's yeah. like, well, obviously to make things happen, you've got to work for it. Yeah. But then there is a very big element to, you know, manifesting and just like being, if you're not in a state to receive, it's not going to come for you. So yeah. it's just like opening that back up and like even just realizing that has changed a lot. Um, so that was really good. The workshop was amazing. Um, and then, yeah, on the other side of that, I've been working on like rebranding, launching my coaching page. Just coming along so well. Just coming along so well. I had two photo shoots over the weekend. I've l- obsessed with the photos and videos They've from that. They've turned out so well. Oh, so yeah. well. And so honestly, like I'm probably going to launch it this week. Um, it is obviously somewhat still within Acro and teaching Acro, but it definitely is going down the direction of mentoring um, around the three pillars of... I guess, being an athlete, being mind, body and performance. Um, And so, like I've mentioned, I've set this up so that I can build over the next six months before I can take it to the next level with big, big visions. Um, And as much as I just want to do all of that straight away and I put so much pressure on myself of launching it and going full time has to be everything, whereas like it doesn't and I've set it up to not be that way. And especially because quite literally every single day you like social media – is my number Mm. one priority. I want it to be my number one priority and it is, but equally you also have to have that balance of putting energy into your current business you're working on, but not let it take over so much that it takes away from your social media. Yes. And Jackson kind of reflected that to me as well. He's like, you don't have to launch right now if you don't want to. Mm. And I was like, the reason I want to is because I'm so passionate. There's a massive niche in the market and I want, like, I want it to start. Like I'm ready. It's also before going to LA. Yeah. And I'm just like so ready to reach out to studios and start sharing what I want like to help other athletes on their journeys as well um and so it's just like I don't have to launch and go zero to 100 within the first day like I'm going zero to 50 over the next six months and like that's how I've set it up so I just need to like remember that um but overall just like so excited and just genuinely focusing in on obviously this LA trip but my mentoring and then my social media at the moment is just like my driving force at the moment like Obviously, my health, but I feel like that's just like. I feel like that's just going along nicely. Like, yeah. you should see Tori's skin at the moment. Oh, it is working. It just looks so good. Thank it makes you. me so happy. I know. And I do, I definitely, like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it hasn't changed anything. Like, it definitely yeah. has. Like, I 100% feel so much more confident. I just, I think I overall feel happier because I'm loving everything that I'm doing, but also my health is genuinely feeling good. Like, yeah. my skin is improving, my gut feels great you know, body image and the way that I'm feeling is just feeling good. And it's like when all of that is in flow, of course you're going to feel good. Yeah. So it's just working on keeping that, you know, up and not letting it go down before then I do something about it. Yeah. Um, so we're just maintaining, feeling being good. being proactive rather than reactive. Yes. Mm-hmm. And my chiropractor said this to me yesterday, um, the other day. He was like, you're, it's up to you when you book your next appointment, but you need to remember, I don't want you to start feeling shit before you're like, oh, I think I need an adjustment. You're like, okay, cool. I'm feeling good. Can I stay on top of this by getting an adjustment next week? This is exactly what I do with my massages weekly. Yep. I don't wait till I'm so sore. I can't walk or I'm so exhausted. Every single week I will get a massage. Yeah. It just, you need to just look at those one percenters that help you. And it may not be a massage. It may not be the chiropractor. It simply may be 
I don't know, just like doing something for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And even like saunas and recovery, yeah. like don't wait until it's too late. And that could be a matter of days, weeks, month, mm. whatever that is for you, but stay on top of it. And I think that's the biggest thing for like sustainable health, fitness, yeah. like stay on top of it and don't wait for it to get bad. Segment completely, but like, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, I think that's me. Just like I have a vlog going up. Well, it will be up by the time you guys listen to this. But I did a day in the life and I kind of spoke a lot about businesses and my challenges with it, which I kind of just spoke about. But it's like so daunting to open up about business. Yeah, it is. Because it's like I want to share the challenges of business, but then it's like you don't want people to perceive that you're like not capable of having a business when everyone's mm-hmm. going through it. So yep. I was like, I spoke about it on YouTube and I want to speak to it on my Instagram, but it's like, oh, like it's scary. But it's like... Because it almost takes that credibility away from you and it yeah. doesn't at all, but that's what it can be it's, perceived as. Yeah, and what it yep. feels like. And it's like every single person who owns a business has some sort of struggle. Yeah. Would that be the same or not? There's no one doing business that's perfect. But I think that also makes people drawn to you in mm. a different way because not many people do that. Yeah. So it's like, okay, what do I actually provide that's different and that's you also speaking about your struggles while still being competent to hold your own. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. You good? So, yeah. That was I told you it was long. You, and we all buckled in and we all loved yeah, every part of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Compared to my previous week, mm-hmm. last podcast, I was a little bit all over the place. I since I'm feeling so much better. I don't know what happened. She wasn't feeling good. She Mm. wasn't feeling great. But I've almost like flipped my mindset the past week. And I literally walked away from that podcast. And I said to Tori, we went for a walk after. And I was like, I didn't love that. And I think there was just a few things that came up for me. I was almost like telling myself stories and just all these things that one, I wasn't capable. I was exhausted 24 seven. I didn't have time. And it's like, yes, while they can all be true, Mm. I can also do something about it. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. I did something about it. And I feel so much better the past week I was very productive I've gone into time blocking so Mm. mm, yes yeah productivity does not mean busy I have not been off my feet busy working 24 7 maybe like Tori has but I've been productive in the way that when I'm on my laptop I'm on my laptop when I'm resting I'm resting Mm -hmm. rather than combining them both I know that you literally put on your story yesterday your first work stint was 8 to 12 was Mm. it yeah Yeah, that's not going to work for me I have to do two hours right now and I do two hours three times a day so it's like six hours of work I guess yeah it goes into like programming check-ins and then like admin stuff replying to client um, responses and then it goes into editing and that has worked so well for me I can focus so much more I'm not getting distracted by being like oh my god I have to do this oh should I have to edit this reel like Mm. so much better so highly recommend time blocking such an easy thing yeah I think when you know speaking mostly to like working for yourself as you know what you do Mm -hmm. and it's like okay if I need to do five client check-ins and then I have two reels to create it's like well I'm not going to try and fit all that in one work block because that's just like messy yes so it's like okay let's sit down two hours to do five client Mm check-ins quick break walk whatever gym eat whatever that is then come back and I'm going to edit those two reels yeah and that might take an hour and then okay let's have lunch reassess and then continue and I think I've 100% have like unintentionally put that into my routine this week and it's been so good so good yeah yeah and I've also been playing in a lot more to how I feel so last weekend before I obviously the podcast I just um when the previous week I spoke about how I was so exhausted and I Mm. actually was like I was dead and this past week I don't know what's happened but I haven't felt that way again I've actually have energy I'm really tired at night 100% that's a given but I feel good, mm. a bit confused, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run with it. Yeah. And I think it's because I have actually been leaning into when I'm resting, I'm actually resting. And yes. if I'm tired, I'm not trying to do everything. And I think at this point of your prep, like you ha- you just have to allow for that. Literally. And if that means you're doing five, six, wor- five, six hour work days, four hour work days, like that's okay. You're getting what you need to get done. And then you're having the slower mornings. You're taking the rest. Mm-hmm. You're saying no to things. Because if you're going to try and push, 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 you're going to... Like it's going to be detrimental to what you put 100%. on stage. Exactly. Yeah. And for example, the past two weeks I've gone for one or two sunrise walks. Okay. Sorry guys. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Had to change some chords around. But what I was basically saying is that I'm playing into my rest energy. And then I'm also, when I'm feeling good, I'm working and I'm going for it. And it's just going really well for me at the moment. A little side note. I really want to set up the office when I get back. Yes, properly, I agree. Properly. You'll have your Mac. Yeah. I want to get the second white desk. Yeah. 
because I'm just not vibing. I need. Oh, one hundred percent. It's not. It's just a laptop right now in a space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I let's agree. do that when I get home. Okay, sounds good. Um, the other thing I was going to say is the biggest thing is not preempting how I'm feeling, and mm. I think this was coming off the last few weeks. I was like shit, I'm going to feel so tired tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Don't know how I'm going to do that. And it's like, you don't know how you're going to wake up and feel. So stop preempting and almost having anxiety around the fact of how you're going to feel the next day when you don't know. Wake up and run with it. And almost because like you are in prep, of course you're going to be tired. Yes. But it's like you're just already saying, like you're already assuming that you're going to wake up tired tomorrow because it's less calories. It's more training. Yeah. Where it's like, wait, let's just see how I feel. Because exactly. your body is adapting to the changes that you're making. Exactly. And then if you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, my calories have been lower. I'm going to feel exhausted. Well, then you're already telling yourself that. So you're starting to believe that story that you've made mm. up for yourself. And yes, of course, it's probably true. But the more you play into that, the mm. more you're going to feel. And it doesn't take away from the fact that it is hard, but it's also accepting that it's going to be hard. Like yeah. no shit, well, it's, it's going to be gonna hard. it's going to be harder if you have a shit mindset. Exactly. So you may as well try and make it good with a good mindset. Yeah. I completely agree. So that's something else I've been working on. And the past week, really playing into my own energy, which is just going perfectly with today's episode. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of touch on that later. But the previous week, hated spending time alone. The past week, loved every second of spending Mm -hmm. time alone. So that's just worked for me. Um, The footy on the weekend. Oh my God, yeah, we did. We watched Gold Coast Suns and Richmond. Yes. I actually go for Richmond and it's Tori's second team. Yep. Second, who's your first team? (laughs) St Kilda. St Kilda, yeah. And look, I was a little bit nervous to start. Richmond didn't didn't play so well. they weren't playing well. But new team, new coach, big players out. They caught back up at the end. It was actually a very good second half. So chased their tail and did well. It was just fun like doing something. Yeah. It was and really good. We both like so into footy, so it was just nice to like go and watch, yeah. like be there. It's yes. just such a different vibe than watching. I just on love TV. live sport, and this Same. is also something we're going to plan on next year. Hopefully, yes. is going to the states and doing like a sports trip. Yeah. So think of like what we did in Europe, but in America. Yes. Big trip, our whole group, yeah. and all the sports. That's a vibe. <sighs> I'm yeah, so, so keen for that. That's been a huge bucket list of mine. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I bought a Mac yesterday. Yeah. So I'm so excited. By the time this comes out, I would be using it. I'll let you know how it all goes next week. What colour did you get? The grey one. Yeah. Nice. I feel like it has to be just yeah, aesthetics. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So that was expensive, but worth it. Yeah. Uh, I've been wanting one for so long. So like, why not? Yep. Why not? 100%. Um, just lastly, if just to show you where I'm currently at, beef mints last night. Oh my which God. just goes to show <laughs> my current brain capacity. Yeah. So I've gone for a 5K hour walk as I do in the afternoon, pretty much every afternoon. I get home, about to cook dinner, and I've just gone to the shops to get garbage bags as well because IGA is so close to our house. So, like, I walked there. Oh, so wait, you did your walk and yep. you came home? Or I, did you get the garbage bags on the way home? I got the garbage yeah, bags yeah, on yeah, the way okay. home from my walk. Yep. Yeah. Come home, start to cook dinner, realise I have no beef mints. I was like, oh, my gosh, I thought I bought some. I was like, oh, that's so annoying. It's fine. Literally just have to go 200 metres to IGA. Walks back to IGA. No extra lean beef mints, only the lean, and that is five grams difference of fats. We don't have room for that. And I was like, holy shit, what do I do? Instead of spiraling, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy diced beef mints, whatever. I'm going to try and make this work. I'll figure it out when I get home. And that was just a whole thing itself. Like I'm standing there for 10 minutes mm. looking at how to adjust my dinner when I've already cooked <sighs> my pumpkin. I've already cooked everything. So I'm like, yeah, I, I was like, <sighs> can I show you a video when you're done? Like when you're done, it's fine. She's like, oh no, yeah, let me watch. I press play. She goes, wait, how long does it go for? I was like, oh, it's like a minute. She's like, no, no. And I was like, that's why I said <laughs> when you're ready. I was getting really agitated. I haven't felt that way in a while. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, getting so annoyed. But I was like, you know what? I figured it out. There's no point in complaining. I can't do anything. Go back to the fridge to get my beans. I find the beef mints. <laughs> I find it. You have a thing for not looking properly in the fridge. Okay. The difference, I didn't think I had any cooked. I yeah. thought I had a packet. So I wasn't looking in the container. It was in the container already pre-cooked, already done. I was like, already so it worked out. out even better. It did. And then I dropped the other beef mints and it was just like, it I didn't a, go everywhere. But yeah. yeah, that's currently where I'm at. So look harder in the fridge. Lily, that is my life update. Yep. Wow. E. Wow. We big I was going to say big kinesiology, big raw reality this week. It was, it was. was necessary. It was. Shower thoughts. Shower thoughts. <laughs> we do week. need a song for that. Yeah, we do. All right. So we've been th- talking about this for quite some time and we look at, you know, girl best friends in the same industry doing similar things, whether they're on the same level, they're bigger. And we're like, so which one are we in the friendship? Yeah. So first example, first and foremost, Steph Claire Smith, Laura Henshaw. And we're like, 
trying to figure out who we are. At the very start, I was like, easy. Um, Tori, Steph, I'm Laura. Yeah. But then after listening to their podcast a little bit more, I'm like, oh, there's kind of aspects of each because mm. Steph said she's not very organized, kind of always late, but then tries to be, but then doesn't work. Yeah. And I was like, that's me. But then I'm not creative and Steph is and Laura's more business and yeah. that's me. Yeah. So I'm like... It's it's a conflict of both. I still think, bottom line, you're Steph, I'm Laura. Yeah. You just think about like... like Steph's like funny, clumsy, honest. And then like um, Laura's like really clumsy. <laughs> like really clumsy. I'm like, yeah, that's me. And yeah. then you hear them talk and you're like, that just makes sense. And even just like some of the random things Laura says, I'm like, yeah, she doesn't yes. think before she speaks. I'm like, that's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we have... Okay, this might be a little bit niche to yeah. you guys. So if you watch Kylie Ross's videos on YouTube. Or now Kylie Holbeck. Oh, Kylie Holbeck, yep. Kylie's best friend Paige, not into social media. So that's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. But they're always in the vlog together. Yeah, besties, they work together. All pretty much things. like us. Yes. Yeah. Tori is Kylie. I'm Paige. <laughs> yeah. And like when you just watch their YouTube videos, you're you know like, why. we. it was a particular video we we're watching and we we're yeah. like, that is just us like that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So go have a look at that. Then we have another one is, if you know the Just For Girls podcast, yeah. Sam and Izzy. Yeah. Now this is where we are. We're just different We're just humans. different humans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what did we say? I think I was Izzy, you were Sam. Yeah. But I'm not the level Izzy's on. In terms of like, I don't go out. I'm very yeah. like health and fitness oriented. If we just like pull that all back, like just focus on personality. Yes. It's, yeah. Yes, Sam. I think Sam's a bit, um, yes. More A-type. Wait, who am I? Sam. Yeah. So then I'm like, Izzy's like sometimes like straight to the, oh no, but Sam's pretty straight or up. Or Sam's way more. Yeah, no, Izzy she cries is. at anything if someone's mean to her. I'm like, that's me. I was crossing, so oh true. my gosh. I was crossing the street the other day and it was, you know, when there's a car can turn left, yeah. but they have to wait for you to cross first. Yeah. I was crossing and a car overtook um the other car like he was obviously just not very well and yelled at that car opened the window and yelled to me saying what are you doing just waiting for that piece of blonde shit to walk <gasps> over the road when was this this was like uh last week i nearly cried because i was like that was so mean was it a crossing yeah it was a cr- I, I straight up it was a green thing for me and they could turn once i finished walking yeah got you and i was like <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a projection. He's having a bad day. He's ha- he was having a very bad day. Because you're a hot blonde, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, okay. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Anyways. But if there's any like friendships like that, that you think of that, uh, we, whoa, any friendships that you think of that we remind you of, let us know. We'd love to know. And also, who do you think you are in our friendship? Mm. Do you think you're Tori or do you think you're me, Lily? Yes. And even if it's not with your best friends, but just you as like a person. Yeah. Like, are you That's me really or are you Lily? Yeah. I love that. That's fun. Okie dokie, All right. Pinocchio. Don't, I hate that. I love that so much. <laughs> Let's get into today's episode. Yeah. How do you be alone, spending time alone, the importance mm. of being alone. And we've had a lot of girls recently kind of reach out and ask how to be alone because it is scary to begin with so we're like what a better way than to do a whole episode on it absolutely it's such a it's such a journey Mm. and it's all about your personal growth and finding out who you are as a person and I 100% think from like early teenagers to like early 20s mid 20s it's such a discovery Mm -hmm. thing on yourself yeah because as I think we said last episode like from like your mid 20s to mid 30s it's like so different like so extremely different and I think it's it's in this stage where it's like not putting the pressure on yourself to know exactly who you are and what you want to do but being open to discover yourself more and more and more every day yeah have you ever been scared to spend time alone yeah when was that uh when I was going through anxiety and depression yeah. Because my head was a scary place. And it was 100% after going through um, my surgery, getting my appendix out, gaining 12 kilos, acne started, um, going through a breakup. That's when my mental health really declined. And I guess like growing up as like a confident, like happy-go-lucky girl, going through this period where my mind was so sc- like such a scary place, I had to avoid being alone. But in the same breath... I hated being around people because I was so self-conscious 
um, yeah, self-conscious and so lacked so much confidence because mm. of gaining the weight, having acne. So it was like this battle of like wanting to be with people to escape my own head, but then not wanting to be with people because I hated who I was becoming and what I was, if yeah. that makes sense. So it was a scary time and I think the turning point was – having suicidal thoughts and so for me that was like the moment where I was like I've got to get out of this like I have to dig myself out of this hole so I can be okay with being alone it's almost you hit rock bottom and you're like yeah. no holy shit that's scary I actually have gotten to a point where I never thought I was going to get to and I got to mm-hmm. get out and the memory actually came up on my snapchat the other day and I remember it so vividly it was like 1am and I was sitting out on the balcony at my old place in Melbourne in like level 15 and it's like pitch black out night and I was just sitting there on the balcony like freezing cold and I was like what am I actually doing yeah like if I actually don't do something right here and now who knows what tomorrow is going to bring yeah sometimes you almost have to get to the point of being alone to realize Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day you can want to change or everyone else around you can want you to change Mm -hmm. but you won't unless you want to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's almost like you've gotten to that point and you're like, I only reached that point spending time alone. You weren't around other people where that thought came into your mind. You mm-hmm. were around yourself when that thought came into your mind. Yeah. And so it's like the, you know, it's scary. It's like your deepest, darkest thought, not wanting to be here anymore. And that was like purely on my own. So that's when like the realization hit where it's like, okay, I'm genuinely not happy yeah. in myself, in who I am, what I'm doing, how I'm acting, all the things. And so began the journey of self-development yeah but it is so true like you've got to be your own best friend and if I compare like obviously no one else can know what goes on in my mind and can see how it was in 2018 to now but fuck it's different Mm. and if you could be in my mind from then to now you would be like it's a different human Mm -hmm. and it's like my mind right now is so powerful it's inspiring it's motivating even on those days where it feels like it's not it's still it's still there and it overrides every other thought that comes in because I just like I don't see myself ever going back to that place yeah I don't see it's but you also won't allow yourself yeah that's the other thing it's like you've gotten so strong and powerful you've built that part in your brain to not let yourself get to that Mm -hmm. point and that's really interesting because this is where it's like completely different between us because I've never had thoughts or anything like that so my time spending or being scared to spend time alone wasn't because I was not confident in myself it was because it was, it was actually end of last year mm. going through a breakup I didn't want to I didn't want to deal with it yeah so I was being avoidant so you can also be of avoidant of what you're going through mm-hmm. um so you don't have to think about it so you can pretend it's not there and it's so much easier to distract yourself so it's more so distracting than not being alone with your thoughts yeah so it's like you're either avoidant or you're filling the void yes yeah yes and you're avoidant I was filling the void yes <laughs> yeah. and so like end of last year I moved back to Melbourne very fast so that was the whole thing in itself seeing my family for the first time after Europe Mm -hmm. so much to catch up on then within two weeks moved to Gold Coast spent 24 7 with Tori because I just did like that was me distracting (laughs) myself finally living together and I also didn't have a car so we're always Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. wasn't in prep either so like we could do all these different things yeah and I was being so avoidant where I was like I am so proud of myself for handling this breakup (laughs) so well uh, yeah, and then it hit me. Probably what when we moved when we into moved. the new house yes. and we, like you got your car and we were doing our own routines again. Yes. Yeah. That's when it hit me and it hit me hard. And like, I just of remember bef- like early stages of moving, like Taylor would be like, and Taylor and I would be like, she's not been alone yet. <laughs> like she thinks she's navigated it, but she hasn't yet. <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh, I didn't. Um, it was like, you'd just be laying in bed at night and you'd be like, oh. Oh, okay. I'm here alone. I'm here alone. Yeah. And it was almost getting to the point where I'm like, okay, yeah, we're not messaging. We're not talking. We're yeah. done, done. Um, And then that's, I had to process it later. So it's like, if you actually acknowledge what you're going through earlier, choose the hard earlier and yeah. it's going to be easier later on. But it doesn't mean no way was right or wrong either. Yeah. Didn't mean that I completely avoided and it the whole honestly, time. And honestly, like you needed that time. I think like I there did. was no way that <clears throat> you were going to go through that breakup on your own. No, not a chance. Not a Love you, chance. But no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, that's yeah. where everyone just has to have their own process. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, you know, you can, it's like what you said before, like until you get to rock bottom, you don't realize that you need to change and people can want you to change. And it's the same as being in a relationship. How many times I maybe come to you saying, you know, this is, mm-hmm. I see this 
as detriment to you like yeah. I'm looking out for you and you'd be like no 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 it's fine brush it off and but until you got to that point where it built up built up built up and you're like oh okay and the same for me with my ex-partner like all my friends would be like this is happening too many times you're going over it he's done this you're doing that like you've got to stop and it's like no 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 but until breaking point that's when you realize and it's shit like yeah. you wish you could go back and be like yeah I just wish I listened to my friends yeah but you also but don't got to experience it. it yeah yeah and at the end of the day it gets, it gets to a point where you're like you have to learn yourself yeah. and you have to keep getting hurt until you mm-hmm. learn yourself yeah anyways it's not a breakup episode it's a spending time alone <laughs> that's coming everyone <laughs> yeah that'll be a whole other thing but how to start spending time alone mm. because I think the initial stages can be scary both Tori and I do love our alone time but for those that are like oh god no I can't even go for a walk by myself how would you say the start to spend time alone I'm trying to think because I feel like that time of my life is somewhat of a blur but also so vivid at the mm-hmm. same time and so I think I remember I remember because my parents went away And I had no choice. Like, Mm -hmm. it was just, like, me in the house. And I think it was, like, almost forcing yourself to do that thing alone. So, it's, like – and I I remember, like, doing this up until, like, last year where it's, like, I'm looking for someone to do that thing with. It's, like, you today saying in the car about the movies, which we'll get into. But it's, like, oh, I really want to go do that. Yeah, I can actually do that alone. Like, I don't have to wait for someone to do that thing. And that can be anything. That could be going for a walk, going to the gym. Like, you could be constantly relying on someone to do something with. And it's like, you will use anyone. Mm. Anyone. Even if you don't like them, you'd rather use them than be on your own. And I think until you can be aware of that, like, you might be sitting here listening going, oh, fuck, like, I'm actually doing that. And I'm actually clinging on to anyone that I can just avoid being alone. Yeah. So it's like, okay, where... Once a week, can I commit to being alone? And I was listening to, no, it was actually Chloe. <laughs> Chloe was saying it in our last podcast. It's like, if you can commit to a friend and showing up to the gym and then you don't show up, they're going to be pissed at you. So start trying to put yourself in that position of like, it's your self relationship is a two person thing. Yeah. So if you say to yourself, I'm going to get up and go on a walk by myself for two Ks you're going to get up and do that. Yeah. Whatever time, whatever works, but commit to yourself. And that's going to be the biggest thing because if you, it's like being your own best friend is a two way relationship. It truly you is. have to show up as if you're showing up for your friend because you are your friend. Yeah. And you don't have to go through this whole self-development thing to start. You don't have to go on a walk and be like, okay, how am I currently feeling? Oh, chuck fuck on a, no. No, chuck on a fun podcast. Chuck on something that's lighthearted, something's in your ears, it's distracting you. Mm -hmm. And then I think on top of that, go order yourself a drink by yourself. And I think that's also like the next step in it. Okay, I can walk out the house by myself and whatever, but let's go take that step above. Mm -hmm. Go order yourself a drink, a coffee, a smoothie, whatever it may be, because then that's putting yourself out there even more. Yeah. And I think just now that I reflect, like obviously my mum was a single parent for so long. So she really role modelled an independent woman. Yeah. Like she can go out and do whatever the fuck she wanted. And it's like, I know that, you know, touch wood, but if Jackson and I were to split up, I would be okay because I would be a strong fucking independent woman because I've learnt all the tools to be alone, to enjoy my own company, to be confident in myself, to do life, so to speak. And I think, like Lil said, you don't need to be like, oh, I'm embarking on this self-development journey. I need to listen to this podcast and do this course. It's like, no, you can still... I feel like I'm going to contradict myself when I say this, but like put on a podcast to distract yourself. Yeah. But you're still out to be alone. Yeah. Like you're still getting out on your own and that's a step forward. It's not going from zero to 100. Yeah. It's implementing small things at a time. Yeah. And it's like slowly implementing things like listening to podcasts about, you know, this podcast, like about being alone, self-development, how you can learn more about yourself and discover more about yourself. Um, And then I think the next step personally for me was like journaling. Mm, because then that's actually acknowledging your thoughts and what you're going through yeah I think acknowledging the feelings around whatever it is that you're navigating for me that was my mental health and the state of that it was what I was going through gaining weight acne feeling alone all the things and it was like eventually as I could put that down on paper in front of me and read it back to myself Mm. was like okay I'm actually feeling these things it's not just like thoughts flying around in my head get it out on paper get it out on your phone and then read it back to yourself and like 
actually want to question yourself like how am I actually feeling it's almost accepting the hard truth Mm. because you want to avoid the feelings that you're feeling yeah and then when you see it in front of you you're like why the fuck am I saying that to myself Mm. I wouldn't say that the thoughts that I'm feeling I would not tell you so why am I telling myself and sometimes it has to be written in front of you to actually come to that realization as well and that's where like people struggle with journaling and I have along the along the journey as well but you don't have to start significantly writing 30 pages a morning. It's like, wake up, open your journal. How am I feeling right now? Mm. And that could be midday. You could start to feel a bit anxious midday. Okay, write it down. How am I feeling? And then reflect on that and be like, okay, why am I feeling this way? And how can I I change that? How can I fix that? How can I flip my perspective on that? Yeah. Because all I've really done to get to where I, like from where I was to where I am now is flip my perspective on everything in life. Coming off the back of that, I feel like what I've almost gone through the past two weeks is me quite literally been flipping my perspective. Mm -hmm. I actually called my mum last week and you know when someone's like about to, if they ask you if you're okay and you're going to cry, but I was on the walk on like the main section. I was like, I can't cry. I don't have sunglasses (laughs) on. It's embarrassing. Well, it's not embarrassing. You can cry if you want. (laughs) I definitely have. Yeah. And she was, I was just like, I'm feeling alone no I'm feeling lonely Mm. I'm not being alone I'm feeling lonely and I was in my head and I was like okay why am I feeling lonely and I had to actually speak it as soon as I ended that conversation with her I felt so much better she actually probably has no idea until she's listening to this but it was literally okay I work by myself so I have no social social interaction the whole day for example, Jackson goes to training. You even go to Dynamite, for example. Mm-hmm. Like you just a little bit out and about. Even you go to hustle. You speak to people. Mm-hmm. I go to the gym. I train, train by, by myself. myself. I do yeah. cardio. I train by myself. And then now I'm also walking by myself a lot of the time. So I'm like, holy shit, I'm spending so much alone time. Then I think that day I also did recovery by myself. Yeah. So I was like, holy shit. And also because you have committed to saying no more. Yeah. To put yourself first. Yes. To, you know, make the yeah. final project the best it can be yep. so it's like okay I'm also doing this myself but I, I can actually change that like I can go and do recovery with someone yes and then I think it was also the biggest thing that hit me when I get into bed I have no one to message mm. you and Jackson are getting into bed together mm-hmm. and I was like then I'm alone even more so I think it was also just really hitting me and I think the past few months would have really hit me too and I was like yep that's hard Mm. But you're also making those conscious decisions to do so. You don't actually have energy to put out there. But I also flipped it from being I'm lonely to, no, I'm just spending more time alone. I actually have can do whatever I want. I can mm. get into bed whatever time I want. I can scroll on TikTok if I want. Make your own dinner. I make my own dinner. I don't have to buy groceries for anyone. Yeah. I can also read my book to whatever time with the light on. No one's sleeping <laughs> next to me. And yeah. it's just like actually reframing the story to be more of a positive mindset Mm -hmm. helps so much. And even on the weekend, I think you and Jackson were out all Saturday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. And I was like smiling in bed. I was like, wow, I just spent the whole entire day alone and I feel really good. And I was like, because I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So it's flip your mindset to actually enjoying your time alone rather than playing the victim in it. Yeah. And like, I don't want to just be like, oh yeah, change your perspective. Because it literally is. And it's going to take practice. Yes. Like you have to understand how you can change your perspective. So like Lilith just said, I, yeah, you're feeling lonely, but it's like, I'm choosing to be alone yes. right now. Because what in that, in choosing that, you're actually putting a better, what do you call it? Package. Mm. You're choosing to put a better package on stage by making these choices. Yeah. So it's navigating how you're feeling throughout that process. And it's not forever. No. In a matter of six weeks, we get to go back to fishbowl and go bowling and do all the fucking things and the social things that we want to do. But it's like this period right now is tough, but you're choosing hard now to have easy later. Or it's like I could have easily gone down the path and started spiraling my mind. And everyone else can do this as well in terms of like, I don't have a partner. I don't have any friends that want to hang out with Mm. me. I don't have this. All my friends are out on a Saturday night and I'm not. I could easily choose to go down that path. But what is that benefiting me? actually nothing let's bring the facts to my brain rather than the imagination yeah I have good friends around me if I actually wanted to see them I'm sure they would see me Mm -hmm. like it's bringing those thoughts really just back to reality I'm just going to bring some kinesiology into here right now so something that we all know but was reflected to me on the weekend and I was like wow so true so as we know we have our conscious and subconscious mind right and I'm we're going to go into an episode on this but for right now your subconscious mind is 96 percent 
Subconscious. Subconscious. Whoa. Your conscious mind is 4%. Yeah. I learned this a few years ago and it baffled the fuck out of me. And I love saying it to people. Yeah. 96% of the time is you're being controlled by your subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. So when you think about that, everything you've learned up until now is stored in your subconscious mind. So for an example, we were at the kinesiology workshop and she was talking about how kids sometimes when they're young get attacked by a dog and that goes into their subconscious as evidence that dogs are scary. So for the rest of their life, they're like, I'm scared of dogs, dogs Sarah's are scary. Day, her literally latest vlog, something happened with an animal. I think it was a goat went in her very early childhood. Oh, really? And then she was scared of animals for the rest of her life. So her family got a dog to try and help that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. So this, and then a grown man, he's probably, I don't know, the 40s, 50s. He was sitting there and he goes, happened to me. For 30 years, he was terrified of dogs. He had to call his friends, make sure they never brought dogs over. When they went out, he was a distance mm-hmm. from dogs until he forced himself to buy a dog and change the wiring there yeah. right so even things like you may have been told that when you're alone that means you're lonely you have no friends yeah. at school right you know when you're sitting alone eating your lunch oh she's alone she's lonely she has no friends yeah. she's a loser and so that could be in your subconscious mind without you even knowing so that as soon as you think about being lonely you have evidence to prove that being lonely is a bad thing yeah right so instead and that takes a lot to be aware of that. Like yeah. it's not you just going to be like, oh, from this moment in school is the reason why I think this, right? Yeah. But your subconscious is 96% and it, the reason we have it is to survive. That's yeah. what it does. It literally keeps you alive. So it hangs on to evidence to prove to you why such things are dangerous or scary or whatever. So when you can start to be aware of that and change the narrative and be like, okay, being alone is actually doesn't mean I'm a loser. No. It means... I'm happy. I'm yeah. confident. And you change the story and you have to continue to say it to yourself, but it'll change your world. It seriously does. Yeah. It's so interesting how that's literally happened to me in the past few weeks. I've actually always enjoyed spending time alone. Mm. And I even remember my parents coming to me in like school and they were like, you haven't really done anything on the weekend lately with your friends. Are you okay? Are you all yeah. good? And I'm like, no, I actually straight up and enjoy my own alone time. Other people enjoy partying on Saturday night. I straight up enjoy being in bed by myself. It's something that I like doing. So it's also just knowing that it's okay to spend time alone. If everyone's doing everything and you don't want to do that, it doesn't mean you're lonely. It straight up means that you actually are your own best friend. You love your own company. And why the hell would you not want to? Yeah. Yeah. Done. Slave. Oh, I'm I would love to just touch on traveling by yourself. So let's step yes. it up a notch. Okay, so for the for the gals out there who are like, I'm pretty good on my own. Like, you know, I go on my walks. I go on my solo work dates, coffee dates, lunch dates. I go to the movies by myself, whatever that may yeah. be. We're going to take it up a notch. Yeah. So you're thinking, what more can I do to get more for myself? What more can I do to... Expand. Expand, explore, discover myself. Traveling. Yeah. Straight up. Traveling is the best form of self-discovery and I love traveling by myself. There is something so euphoric. I romanticize the fuck out of it. Mm -hmm. You just feel like main character energy. I've never, oh, the only time I've traveled overseas by myself was coming back from Europe Yeah, where I did the whole trip by myself through Greece, through, uh, where the fuck did I go? Like Singapore, Paris. Paris, oh, yeah, you do Paris and then Singapore home. Yeah. So like I did the whole thing by myself and I was like, holy shit, that just, I don't know how, but that just like changed everything for me. Yeah. It was a big step. You only have yourself to back. And that's why, because you automatically have no one else to trust, but you, and you have to go all in that. It builds your confidence when you're like, oh, I just did that. Yeah. Traveling by yourself is key. Yeah. So let's talk about it for a second. So let's go into it. <laughs> this does not mean you have to book a flight overseas and go traveling overseas. This could mean, say you live on the Gold Coast, you're going to drive down to Byron Bay for the day. Oh, five. Like I need to do that. Like ASAP. Drive down to Byron Bay for the day. Go up to the sunny coast for a night. Book yourself an Airbnb, a hotel room. There is something about having a hotel room to yourself. I, (gasps) or whenever, when I go to like, like Ad- when I went to Adelaide and had the hotel room by myself, and yes. like when I do things by myself, it oh yeah, it slaps. <laughs> so this can like this doesn't have to be America catastrophic. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be in your book and flight to LA. But I'm at that point, right? Yeah. I'm at that. I'm at that stage of my life. But yeah, I mean, get in your car. You're living in Melbourne. Go down to the peninsula. Yeah, peninsula. Yeah, yeah. Go book a 
the Airbnb in Sorrento. Do these things on your own where it's like, I want to just go and I want to sit on the book at the beach and read my book. Mm-hmm. I want to sit in my hotel room and watch Netflix for 10 hours and have no one tell me what that's what? wrong or yeah. turn it off or we need to eat dinner at this time order yourself uber eat. oh imagine this is gonna be so excited <laughs> <laughs> imagine driving down to the byron bay you you check into your airbnb you open the blinds you see the ocean and you order yourself some uber eats you open the bed and you sit and watch netflix beautiful stunning that is just oh next and then you level. get up and you do some journaling in the morning and you go for a walk maybe a bike ride maybe yeah, you just romanticize you that bike or ride. you sleep in and then you go to a yeah you sleep in and then you go to a cafe and you just sit and enjoy your meal yeah fuck i think yes, we get so I'm caught up turned on <laughs> so, same, same. <laughs> um i think we get so caught up in waiting for other people yeah. to be ready we wait for people to have financial security to be able to travel with you we wait for someone to finish work or we have to align our schedules you wait to be in a relationship yeah we yep. wait for someone to be free on a friday night to go to the movies why are we waiting 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 when life's too short go and do it by yourself mm-hmm. literally go do it by yourself and it's like my america chip i would love for Jackson to come. Yeah. I would love for you to come. Yeah. But it's like, I can, I can get to have both. Yeah. I get to book Bali with you in July. I get to book something with Jackson at the end of the year, but I also get to take myself to America because I am ready for that next step. Yeah. And this, like, don't get me wrong. This is fucking scary. Like I was Yeah, she's, panicking. she's been scared. <laughs> I've been really scared. And I've been panicking to Lily about going through freaking customs in America while they're holding big fat fucking guns. Rifles. Um, and like, it's just scary. I've done it a few times, but I was little. So it's like- Hold up. You've built that thought up, that subconscious mind. Yeah. Because it's not scary because you saw the guns. Whereas American security is the, if you do it right, yeah. is the nicest people how ever. Do you do it wrong? so funny. Uh, you actually don't have a visa and you lie to them. That's okay. how you do it wrong. <laughs> okay, I won't do that. Noted. I won't do that. Um, yeah. So again, great awareness. That is my subconscious mind from a past experience proving and bringing in the evidence that the, that it's scary. Right. Yeah. And so I know that I'm scared. I absolutely know that, but I'm fully leaning into the scarcity, the discomfort, but boy, am I excited to just sit on that plane by myself. <sighs> I cannot wait to land, step out of the airport. And I'm like, where do I go? What, what do, do I, I want to do? The, I'm spending the first night by myself, right? Yeah. I'm spending the first two nights by myself because the girls will get there on the fourth. I get yeah. there on the second. Waking up that next morning, what do I want to do? You FaceTime me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like where do I want to go? I'm going to go grab, maybe I'll grab a matcha and try a matcha. Oh, maybe totally. I will walk <laughs> so down exciting. the street and just find a really cool gym. Yes. Like I, I can't explain how excited I am to do this. Yeah. I can't wait to sit in a cafe and just chat with a random person. Yeah. And that's and what it's who about. who knows what that's going to bring me. Yeah. So, like I said, it doesn't have to be catastrophic and you're booking a flight to LA. It can be a two-hour drive to your nearest coastline. Yeah. You can go inland and go bush and it's quiet and silent and fucking relaxing, mm-hmm. right? But it's where you get to step out of your day-to-day, your comfort zone, your routine, and just explore yourself outside of that. Because we get so caught up in doing our routine, doing our day-to-day, so regimented, like as humans, that's just kind of how what we are so stepping out of that is where you're going to discover yourself more being like waking up and being like okay what do I want to do today yeah how do I want to show up who is the person that I want to be today because you can literally be and do whatever you want you can straight up do whatever you want no one's ever telling you what to do Mm mm-hmm so I was gonna say have a look at some of the questions that you got yes so I put on my story this morning because I was actually really curious and I thought it was perfect for this episode but basically just put up a little story saying where is it um okay relax Instagram why do you struggle when trying to be in your own company getting to know yourself discovering more about yourself to reach your true potential learning to be alone and not feel lonely Mm -hmm. and I got quite a few responses considering it was just not too long ago so I'm just going to read through anything comes up you want to speak to. Yeah. Interrupt me. Um, Def's trying to figure out full potential and meditating. Thoughts won't stop. Meditating is great. Great topic. And this is also interesting because her, who she said, or whoever said that, thoughts don't stop. Mm-hmm. Example, you love meditating. Me, meditating. My meditation is me going for a walk or laying in bed at night. And mm-hmm. I don't like listening to meditation things and it absolutely this is probably me playing a story in my own mind Mm -hmm. saying I don't like it it doesn't work for me but I truly find it the best when I close my eyes and I'm trying to go to sleep that's actually like 
my meditation yep. in a way because that's 100%. where my thoughts come up. Yeah, your meditation can be anything. Yeah, and just like I do meditate, well, I focus more on breath work, but doesn't mean my thoughts don't stop. Yeah, exactly. I'm, my thoughts. I said to Lily this morning, the second I woke up, I was thinking about the script that I'm writing for one of my posts yeah. for my launch. Yeah. The second my eyes opened, and that doesn't mean my mind stops, but it's like, can I start to put on some meditation music and become aware of my thoughts and be present in that? And this is also where at the moment I'm getting up, making coffee and reading. So my thoughts aren't going rapid from the second I wake up because I found that's yeah. making me really tired. So that's also my meditation, I guess, in the morning because I'm not being like, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I'm like, okay, let's start in a calm state. It relaxes mm. me. Then I'm ready to go. Yeah. See, I can't at the moment because I'm just running wild. Yeah. And I'm so like, it's like I so different. I read at the moment because I'm just yeah. switch off. But I don't want to switch off at the moment. Anyway, next one. I struggle to not... I struggle to not feel guilty if I'm being productive. I struggle with stillness. Oh, so yes, I get that. I get that a lot. And that was even, I put it on my story last week. I came home from work on a Wednesday. I had only done 8,000 steps. My daily target is 10. I was feeling so fucking exhausted. My eyes were stinging. I had to create a reel because it was a deadline and I had some work to do on my laptop. And I spoke about it on my YouTube. I spoke about it on Instagram, but I was like, I feel the need that I have to do my steps and I have to finish this reel and I have to do this and I have to do that email. Whereas it's probably going to be worse for me if I was to finish Mm. that. Whereas if I could just go, I'm going to create that reel, then I'm going to shower, eat my dinner and get into bed and just relax. So then I can get up and be productive tomorrow and do what I need to tomorrow with more energy. I find this is something I'm actually good at is I find I'm really good at switching off. And like, if I have heaps to do, but I don't have to do it right this second or I actually know it's not going to be beneficial to me. I'm actually very good at being like, that's a tomorrow thing. I'm actually mm. going to enjoy my energy tonight, whatever I need to do, switch off early. And then that allows me to be more productive tomorrow. So my biggest reminder to you is if you're switched on 24 seven and not allowing yourself to be still and rest, you're actually not going to be as productive as you think you are. Mm. I promise you the more breaks or like time you actually take to yourself, the more productive you're going to be the next day. Yeah. Period. Being uncomfortable with my mind and who I am, others are a distraction for my low self worth. I think we've touched on that. We've touched on yeah. that, girl. I feel you, but just Push hang in there. Through. Push through. Do yeah. the work. Know that it gets you're better. amazing and it gets yeah. better. Yeah. Learning how to work with myself and lean into unseen potential. I love this. That is really really cool. And I, I feel like. The more you discover yourself, the more you'll realize your potential, Mm -hmm. right? And so I picked my cards the other day and I literally read them to you and you were like- It was wild. It was fucking wild. I've never had such accurate cards. It's 11-11. It's 11-11. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I've in me always known that I would be some sort of a mentor coach. I've From the little girl, I was always said I wanted to be a um, motivational speaker. I'm doing that. Whether that through the podcast, YouTube- speaking to my athletes, coaching the kids, right? I am doing that in some way, shape or form. The more I find my potential every single day, and it's been probably evident more in the last few months, Mm -hmm. is the more that I, one, discover myself, but two, trust myself. Yeah. And trust that everything that I have to say, there's someone who needs to hear it. Yeah. And that, like, that's in my industry being, you know, through social media, wanting to share my journey and mentoring athletes. I know there's someone out there who needs to hear exactly what I have to say. Yeah, And I put a reel up the other day of my skin. I was walking. I was like, this is such a random reel. I kind of like, I didn't really want to post it. Mm. But I was like, there's someone that needs to hear this. There's been like five people share it and it's doing amazing. Isn't it crazy? You actually don't realize the impact you have. And yes, it's different when it comes to a platform. So you almost can evidently see that. Mm-hmm. But for example, I had um, one of a coach, I had a coach tell me yesterday and he was just like, I actually have so many clients that are like being like, oh, Lily's doing this. Can I do this? I was like, huh? And they're like, oh, Lily has this in a meal plan. Can I have this in my meal plan? And he was like, "Uh, no, because that's what works for her, not works for you. But I'm still like, shit, people actually watch me. And it's like, obviously, but sometimes you forget Mm -hmm. and you forget how much of an impact you make on your life. And even just let's say for an example, you have a younger sibling, whether that's a Mm -hmm. sister or a brother, they look up to you. You doesn't mean you have to post your life on social media, but people do look up to you no matter what. It could be a work colleague. It could be a family member, whatever it is. So just know that people do watch what you do. Yeah. Trusting yourself and knowing that like your potential. Yeah. Is, is big. Um, I love being alone, but lately asking myself always where my right place is in life. 
Yeah. I get that. That was me not long ago. Yeah. <laughs> so and I was I like, what like am I doing? You do go through phases like this and it's normal to second guess yourself when you are trying something new. Yeah. Because it means you're not safe. It means you're not comfortable. As humans, we love that safe and financial security. So the second that you're kind of leaning into something new, of course, you're going to have second thoughts coming up because mm. it's easy to stay where you currently are. Yeah. So just kind of almost let that happen. Yeah. Played and I think out. a big one for like knowing your place in, in life is like, again, coming back to like authenticity yeah. and it's like staying true to yourself. Like you will always find your why and your passion if you're staying true to yourself and who yeah. you are. Yeah. Sure. Um, loneliness, easily my biggest silent devil. Yeah. Yeah. It, and like we said, it's flipping from like, I'm being lonely to I'm alone, mm. but that's not me I'm being lonely. Yeah. Like I'm spending time alone. And especially if you have your own business, it's hard, but also know that like, get out there, plan throughout the week, like specific social occasions too. Mm. So it's like, okay, yep. I'm spending time with my friends here, but I'm being alone here too. And that's okay. Yeah. hundred percent. Feeling so alone as it's a constant thing I'm doing and don't have any friends. So I feel like in this instance, it's up to you where it's like, okay, is it time to put yourself out there and make some friends? Yeah. Because it's not always them going to come to you. And this was another thing that came up in the kinesiology workshop with another girl. She was struggling with that, this exact thing, feeling alone. But she actually came to the realisation that she was closing herself off and not actually letting people, like she wasn't approachable. She would be this shy, reserved, like kind of look negative kind of vibe. People don't want to come up to that. So like change your, again, perspective, your vibe, your mood. And can you just like be a bit more bubbly, smile a bit more, open up your shoulders, look a bit more confident. And maybe people will approach you if you're scared to approach them. This is almost like playing into the, your own victim as well. Yeah. For example, just kind of, it's easy to relate it back to this. Right now, I could be like, I'm single. No one wants to see me because I straight up have zero DMs. Like, I promise there's no boy sliding in there. Yeah. Is, I have nothing at I'm the moment. I'm trying. There's literally nothing. There's <laughs> nothing, right? So it's almost like I can be like, oh my gosh, no one likes me. No one wants to date me, whatever. Ah, uh, Okay, Lily. One, you're not putting yourself out there. Mm. Two, you have your head down at the gym, headphones on. You probably look like a bitch. You're dying on cardio. No one actually wants to speak to you or come up to you. You're not playing out like no one really knows that you're completely single on social media like you're not posting that constantly whatever it may be Mm. you're not going out actively finding someone you're not going on walk clubs whatever you're not putting yourself out there yeah no shit Mm. so it's also coming back to are you putting yourself out there just be really realistic with yourself 1000 percent um i feel like this might be a good one for you but not being bored having someone to chat to yeah this is hard um and something i've definitely gotten used to the past few weeks is actually like no one to say good morning, no one to say good night, mm. no one to be like, oh my God, this happened during my day. And you're like, yes, I can tell Tori, of course. But it is that texting type mm. thing, um, that comfort and security and just like asking advice and things like that. This is kind of where I definitely lean on some friends mm. to, I know when Tori and I lived interstate, uh, good morning, good night, was <laughs> yeah. a common occurrence. <laughs> Even just like, I don't know, it is hard and I'm definitely still like learning and growing through that. So I don't really have the best advice, but I think this is truly where reading has helped me. Yeah, And I think that's why I'm loving it so much because I'm not on social media, seeing everyone together, scrolling and being like, oh my God, they're together, they're together. And just kind of playing into that. I'm not watching YouTube or Netflix where again, there's like all of that distraction. I'm like quite literally reading and I'm not on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I'm not waiting for someone to message. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also just validation within yourself. Like yeah. if you're proud of yourself, why do you have to tell someone? Just be proud of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrate your own wins. Yeah. Someone said nothing. I love it. We love oh. that. <laughs> Clap nice. to you, girl. Um, struggling to be in my own thoughts and head. It makes me anxious. How do I stop this? So I feel like I definitely can relate mm-hmm. because I spoke about it earlier. But yeah. I think it's like, again, like it's really just coming to truth with what your thoughts are and what you're thinking. And like, how can we change that perspective? Like yeah. for me, it was like, oh, I'm so depressed, I'm so anxious, I'm like, I'm just going to be really honest here, but I'm fat and mm. I'm unfit and like these were the current, current constant stories I was saying to myself and whilst I felt like it was true because my body had changed so much and someone also said debilitating body dysmorphia, so being stuck in your head with like those type of thoughts can be debilitating but I think it's like how can you start to support yourself mentally before physically? Yes. So like... For me, the biggest thing was like, 
okay, I'm going to use my legs for, exi- for instance. In school, I used to get called Quadzilla fucking thunder thighs yeah. all the things right and so in my head I was like I have big thighs like how can a girl have big thighs the whole thigh gap stage I didn't have that mm-hmm. like and then the second that I worked on that and I was like no I have strong fucking legs I can mm-hmm. squat 100 kilos I throw women in the air and I catch them again and it's taken me to the world championships and the second that I flipped that no size changed in my legs I changed my perspective therefore I felt more empowered by my legs the most successful people that I see it has in terms of let's say health and fitness it has nothing to do with their physical standpoint it has everything to do with their Mm -hmm. mental standpoint yeah knowing that they're strong they're pushing for pbs they're not being like I need to get skinny yeah I need to get lean it's literally I'm pushing I'm pushing I'm seeing how my true potential and then their performance oh sorry the aesthetics just follow after yeah yeah and it's like your body could stay the exact same way the exact same look and you can have two different like mindsets about yeah. it and you'll feel completely different. Yeah. 1000%. 1,000%. Anything else that's standing out before we wrap up the episode? Um, Probably just like being true to myself and not doing other, doing things to please other people. Yeah. yeah. Actually something I quickly want to touch on and why it's important to be by yourself. When you're constantly around other people, you kind of lose your own quirks and personality and also judgment and Mm. opinions Mm -hmm. so if you're in a group who constantly believe one thing always talking about one thing you're just going to conform to that and there's nothing wrong with that for example Tori and I are a very similar person because of how much time we spend together but equally we also know how to spend time alone we know what we enjoy our opinions on things and there are 100 some things we don't agree on and don't have the same opinions on because we are also so true to ourselves. So mm. I think that's really and important. And then we also respect each other. That's the other thing. And I yeah. think that's why it's important to spend time by yourself to actually be like, okay, what do I actually believe in? Mm. What do I like? What don't I like without clouded judgment coming into play? Well, a scary thing too is like you could be hanging out. This could be a friendship group you've had since you were 10, mm. right? And, you've, and you're now 20 and you're still in that same group. And then the second you start to spend time alone – you're starting to realize that you're not the person you are in that group. Yes. You're not that person. You're not, you don't say those things. And you're starting to realize that who you are alone is who you truly are. So now to transition into being yourself in that group is going to be scary and they might have their opinions and judgment on that, but you have to figure out. And the only way to figure out who you are is being by yourself and learning more about yourself to then be able to go into group settings and purely just be yourself and I am so lucky because well not lucky like I've done the work but every time I meet someone they're like you're just the same yeah the same as you are on socials as you are in real life and I'm like because I trust myself I love who I am and what I bring to the table and I get to just be that we had a conversation after the podcast last week Mm. about how I think people perceive me and it isn't my true self Mm -hmm. because it used to be yeah. But I'm like, I played into that. And let's just give an example. Sometimes I'm known as a very ditzy, light-hearted, that's probably true, but like um, all over the place type Clumsy. personality. Clumsy personality, right? All of those things. Blonde girl, like let's put it straight. Mm. And I was like, okay, that through school was a huge personality trait for me, right? And I played into that. Mm. I played into it a lot. I believed all those thoughts but then I also know there's a side of me that is very successful very smart very switched on but Mm. I don't let those come to the surface Mm. because I'm like that's not people who people think I am Mm -hmm. and it's actually easier for me to just play into what people who I think they are and even I said to you like you could be playing into that because then people do things for you yes and it's not that's not coming from a place of like being lazy but it's like well if I just like act like play into this then I don't really have to do that or it's like if I say something wrong it's funny because of course I said that. Yeah. Rather than being like, well, oh, she's a shit. ditzy blonde. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just easy to play off. I think that's also why I'm like kind of like, kind of not recalibrating. I wouldn't really call it that, but just mm. like really being like, no, who am I? And start to show it. Mm. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, you went to uni, you studied yeah. business and marketing and like you are very book smart. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's just like, again, trying to like lean yeah. into your potential in that area and bring that in because that's who you are. Yeah. And yeah, I actually am clumsy and I'm all over the place, but yeah. it's not letting that be the forefront of yeah. my personality. And like, yeah. if you are, that's amazing. Also cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like either way, yeah. love you still. But it's cool. like, yeah, you just get to have both if that's what you yeah. want.
Yeah, what a good episode. Love this episode. That was a good episode. Yes. If you loved it too, we'd love for you to share on your socials. Again, we always love seeing your tags. But also, if you would love to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or a star Spotify. rating on Spotify. So easy. Click one button, click five. Yeah. We would really, really appreciate that. Yeah. As we said, we're trying to really push the podcast this year, making things happen. Hopefully, some interviews in LA. Yeah. Now that the cat is out of the it. bag. Yeah. Um, but yeah. If you guys have any, like, guests that you'd love to hear from, please let yeah. us know as well. Yeah. We would love to know what guests you would like to have on the podcast. Yeah. All right. But otherwise, have a slayful week and we'll speak to you next week. See you guys. Bye. Bye.